She's bringing the trailer park lifestyle to the world. Come inside, don't be shy, cause Jolene can't wait to meet ya. She's the queen of the park, she's got gossip news and lots of food to feed ya. Jolene Sugar Baker, Jolene Sugar Baker is one budget minded girl. Lots of cheap fashion is the passion at the park, the passion at the park, the passion at the park. Dropping in on neighbors is all part of Jolene's world. Slap on all your blue eye shadow. Watch out for that big tornado. Get all filled with pride in the double wide. Hi there, and welcome to Cooking with Jolene. And welcome to a brand new cooking show where I'll teach you how to fool your guest with inventive ingredient substitutions. And I'll show you how to make down home stick to your ribs cooking. Many of you already know me as the Trailer Park Queen, and you're probably thinking, Jolene's going to reach for the spam right away. Well, it does have its place in the kitchen, but I'm going to teach you how you can fix great meals on the limited budget that you make and tasty meals too. Now, there might be a little bit of unusual ingredients, but it's replacing some expensive stuff that you might not have the money for. You know, I use coupons, I shop yard sales, I go to the dollar store to buy spices and kitchen equipment, and I don't have a lot of money to pay for like $80 chicken. And I know you don't either. So, grab your your stuff in your kitchen, whatever you got, because I don't know what I got back there, but we're going to take a look and put on a smile and get ready to cook the Trailer Park way. Today we're going to start off making corn chip pie. It's an easy casserole that you can throw together when you come home from a long day at work as a cashier or whatever you do to make the six dollars at minimum wages these days. So let's start cooking. You'll need the following ingredients. You'll need a skillet. And beef. And you don't, don't, don't be scared about this mad cow disease because, you know, it's about one person. And, you know, I like ground beef. It's cheap. And, you know, six dollars and I got this big value pack here and you just can't beat that. But I'd like to make sure it has at least 80% or 80% or, 20%. Uh, and the 20% talks about the fat, which is actually the flavor. So as long as you get the 20%, you'll be just fine. Slice ripe olives. That's what you need. I can't even say it, but you can get them the store brand. Slice ripe olives. You need that. Slice ripe olives. You'll need an onion, too. about that, what you heard in the news a few months back that shut down a whole national food chain that gave them disease. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and eat them because I love these, these onions, so I forget about the disease too. I don't care. Two cans, kidney beans. I like to use the dark red and the light red together. It gives it a nice color. Pickled jalapeno slices. You can get these in the Mexican people section. Salsa, which I can't show you the label because, you know, we can't be promoting these big companies. They make too much money as it is. But you can choose mild or, or spicy or garlic lover, whatever you like. One 10 ounce bag of corn chips. You make this easy casserole with corn chips. You know, I don't have time to shred my own cheese, and I just like to buy the shredded cheese in a bag. It just works just the best, you know. You can make this as hot or as mild as you want. Go ahead and use your favorite taco seasoning. Garlic powder. You know, this is my secret ingredient right here, and it's really no secret at all. It's Montreal steak seasoning. Now, you want to make sure when you're cutting your onion, that you don't cut off the little root sack here down at the bottom 
at the first thing because you'll start crying. So what you want to do is, you know, my mama told me that if you just put the knife into the onion like that, just the, in three little marks, like that, you can go ahead and cut off the top. And then you can just peel off the outer sheath of the onion like that. Really and simple. And then you're left with a, a naked onion that you can just go ahead and chop off this little root sack down at the bottom. And that's the thing that makes you cry. You can get that away like that. And you want to go ahead and just slice up the onion. I like to use this butter knife. Well, actually, it's not a butter knife. This is actually, I think it's a bread knife. It was on sale. I don't really know. That's pretty much why. It's about the only knife in my kitchen that'll cut. Rings here. And then you're going to chop it all up. You can use big pieces, you can use small pieces. Just don't use a piece of your finger. That's, you don't want to have that. Let me just throw that away out there. I'm too busy. Take care of that. I'm starting to cry, and you know, they say that if you start crying when you're cutting an onion, and this sounds silly, I don't know who came up with this, but it apparently works. They say if you start crying that you're supposed to take a piece of bread and stick it in your mouth like this and like have your mouth parted while you cut the onion. And that's how you cut an onion. I went ahead and put the ground beef in the skillet and I've got it up on high. And as you see I've got something smoking underneath the the burner there. I'm sure you all have that problem too. Let's just hope it doesn't catch on fire. Just make sure you practice safety in the kitchen. And you can go ahead and add a little bit of garlic powder. Montreal steak seasoning. And pretty much whatever spice that you 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 care to, to put in there. If you like it spicy, go ahead and put in some cayenne. If you like it like it mellow, go ahead and put in some. You could even put in some dill weed. You could put in some more garlic, fresh garlic if you got it. But I just don't have the time to make sure that I have garlic cloves on hand and can crush them myself. We're going to be putting in the taco seasoning once this cooks up a little bit more. Go ahead and add your onions to the mixture. I went ahead and put in the onions into the ground beef mixture once it had started to brown a little bit. You want to keep cooking it until all the mad cow disease is out. I went ahead and put the onions in there and we're just mixing it around now making sure that the beef gets brown and well done. I don't like rare meat at all. You want to cook this until the onions are sort of translucent. That means that they'll be nice and soft in the mixture. Even though that we're going to bake this at the end, you just want to make sure that everything is done in it already because, you know, I just don't want to make sure that you don't have some sort of disease after you fix this. We're going to finish browning our beef here. We're going to make sure that all this beef is brown. And you know, I don't like all this fat in there. Now at this point, we have browned our ground beef here. And we have all this excess oil that we're just going to go out get out of there with a little sucky thing, courtesy of the dollar store. You can go ahead and take a paper towel and like blot out the extra grease there. There we go. That, that looks good. That smells good too. That smells fantastic. Nice and spicy. Now that we have our our beef brown. We're going to go ahead and follow the directions on our taco seasoning package and mix that in there. 
This one calls for three-fourths cups of water. One, two, three. Three-fourths cups of water. We're just going to sizzle this real quick. Cook it down. Okay, we have ground our ground beef with some onions and some taco seasoning and some spices. And it's all ready. It's all done. It's all cooked out. And we're going to set that aside and start gathering together our ingredients to, to put together the casserole. You're going to need an oven safe bowl thing. And what you do is just set it down there and take some of the corn chips and put it in the bottom of the bowl. We went ahead and put the corn chips in the bowl and we're going to take some of our meat mixture, just like one or two, three spoonfuls and put some on top of the chips there. Spread that out. We're going to go ahead and open up our kidney beans. We're going to go ahead and get our kidney beans drained. Now, I, as I said, I like to use the light and dark because it just makes it look prettier. I mean, there's no real reason they taste the same. They're good in fiber. We all need a little bit of fiber in our diet, apparently. That's what my doctor told me. So we're going to take the kidney beans and we're going to put some on top of the meat mixture. You don't have to use these, but I like a little bit of black olives that you just put on top there, just a little bit. Next, you're going to add the shredded cheddar cheese or Colby or Montre Jack or Lumberjack or whatever kind of cheese you like or what's on sale or even government cheese. And you know, we're just going to continue on up in layers until we use all the cans and bags of stuff. And we're just going to continue with the layers, like the chips and some meat and some beans and some, some olives. And if you really like it spicy, I like to use the pickled jalapeno slices. We're just going to put some of those in because I like it hot. So we're just going to continue making layers up until we get to the tippy top. That looks good. We're going to go ahead and put our corn chip pie in an oven that's been preheated to 350 degrees. And it's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes. You just want to make sure that the top is toasted and the cheese has been melted. You know, you don't have to have expensive ingredients to make down-home, stick-to-your-stomach cooking. Today, we've taught you how to make corn chip pie. You know, that's very easy, and all you need is a 99-cent bag of corn chips. And you've got a great casserole for your screaming kids and family in a jiffy. Your guest will never guess that you used a bag of 99-cent corn chips from the convenience store to make dinner tonight. You don't have to have expensive kitchen equipment. You can go on down to the dollar store and get all kinds of kitchen equipment for a dollar. And you just can't beat that. You know, I've sat one on the burner for a while and it, it's only caught on fire a little bit. And you can still use it. A dollar. You can't beat that. We're going to go ahead and check on our corn chip pie.
Wow, look at our our corn chip casserole here, how cheesy and nice that is. We're going to go ahead and plate some. We're going to go ahead and put some Mexicorn on the side, you know, I like it room temperature. I go ahead and tell people it's some sort of corn salad and they just never guess. And I like a little salsa on the side there. And there we have our corn chip casserole. You know, I love this corn chip pie and it was so easy to make and it's cheesy and great and I think you will too. So come on back to Cooking with Joe Lane and learn a great new recipe next time. I'm Jolene Sugarbaker, the Trailer Park Queen. Mmm, that's great. Y'all want some of this? Mmm, that's good. Until next time, Trailer Park fans, I'm Jolene Sugarbaker, the Trailer Park Queen. Slap on all your blue eye shadow. Watch out for that big tornado. Get all filled with pride in the double wide. Visit my website, Joe